Hello friends, welcome back to another best of five. Today we have in the top left as our blue Protoss player playing for Team Dragon Phoenix Gaming. It's going to be Hero, sending out his first worker to go downstairs. On the other side of the map we have, for also for Dragon Phoenix Gaming, a dark South Korean Zerg player of course. So we see this first probe uh, moving across the map in uh, good old Hero style. This is a move that Hero almost always does, especially on the smaller map. Just wants to be blocking that natural of the opponent. Dark is a player that's well aware of that, of course. Opening up with a uh, 17 throne here. Okay. I do like it. Knows that he's going to be blocked and says, hey, I can get that 17 drone a little bit faster. Because if you do get blocked as a Zerg player, you always are going to be needing that 17 drone. Usually they wait a little bit with building it, making sure that they are indeed getting blocked. But Dark is well aware of how Hero plays. So a little bit of, a, I don't want to call it mind games, but some knowledge of what the opponent is doing. What they like to open with here is, of course, quite important. Curious Mind usually is a map considered to be good for Zerg, as it's a relatively small map. Makes it difficult for the Protoss to respond to any Zerg aggression that can occur in the early stages of the game. Also, we have an insane, an absolutely insane angle um, at which Zerg can attack with, with Bane Links, Ravager Link Bane, or just uh, even Roach Ravager. Just having so much area to potentially force field or for the Zerg to potentially spread out their army across makes defending a third base, which majority of the time will be taken here on the low ground, extremely difficult. Hero will need to play some tricks on that map. And we're in luck, because Hero is someone that is uh, very well aware of uh, of how to trick, especially Zerg players, and also Terrans, honestly. Funnily enough, in the trickiest matchup, he is less tricky. In PvP, I always find him somewhat standard, but that's just perhaps because everyone else is very tricky as well in PvP, so he stands out less, you know? Uh, if you are dressed like a clown at a clown's convention, you won't stand out. However, if you're dressed as a clown in your regular office job, you'll probably be the only one with the big shoes and the red nose and the, the paint on your face. I'm not calling Hero a clown, but it's an analogous situation here in which in PvP, everyone kind of cheeses and, and plays a lot of tricks. While in the other matchups, I think majority of the Protoss players are a little bit more standard. While uh, Hero likes to pull tricks in every single matchup. Robo first, and that indeed is a nice little trick to start with. This is an odd wall, by the way. I am not quite sure what to think of this. Um, there seems to be a small hole here. Um, there seems to be a giant gaping hole here, the size of the Grand Canyon in the middle. I'm not even entirely sure if this can be filled by a 3x3 building. I want to say yes, if you build a building here that it's filled, but I I, I don't trust my own uh, my own instincts here. I still want to say yes. That means that this would be the kind of the gap where the unit is going to be plugging the wall, um, if I'd have to guess. Did that Ling actually end up spotting the Robo? No, it didn't. That means that Dark right now, he went into the main base, saw no pylon there. He's considering a lot of options, like, hey, is there something proxied on the map? It's a possibility. Is this a Stargate? It's a possibility. Is this a prism? Also a, a realistic possibility. What is this wall? I want to see how he's going to finish this wall. Because this does not feel like a complete wall to me. Come on, show it to me, buddy. <laughs> Alright, this is not a wall. Hey, he just messed up his wall completely. Like, he really messed it up. You could have just built this cybercore a little bit down, and I don't think there would have been any issues. This just looks very, very, very odd. I don't think a stalker would fit through here, but I, I feel like a ling or a probe might be able to squeeze through this area. I am easy. Awkward start here, for the Protoss player at least. There's uh, one of the worst walls that I've seen in my entire life. That does not seem like this is an opening, but it does uh, mean that there's a lot of surface area on this Stalker. These links are moving in right now. Two drones are getting taken out, but at the same time, these links will most likely also make their way in towards the main base. And they won't be capable of taking out another four workers, but they do get to see the Robo Bay, which is a big deal. Um, they... Ooh, four workers going down. Oh, that's kind of painful. Two adapts for five workers. Usually considered a good trade here for the Protoss player. So we do have the Prism Speed, the Graphitic Drive, as well as the second Disruptor on the way already. Links will be taken out eventually. I think we end up not losing a single worker here on the side of Hero. Well, at the same time, Dark did lose five workers. And uh, to make matters worse, also constructed a crap ton of units. Uh, three Roaches, 12 Links. Ten more Links on the way right now. This is pretty much moving into all-in territory right now. 
16 links. I don't even think Hero needs to attack anymore. Hero, Hero's gonna see these roaches and be like, hey, what you, what you doing here, bud? What actually is this that you're doing? Taking out two roaches here uh, seems like a small deal, but it's actually a, a, a pretty big deal. Every unit that you can get with these disruptors is absolutely great, especially if your opponent is down in workers. Why are we building this many units? What are we doing here, Dark? Even without any harassment whatsoever right now, Hero is just ahead economically. This queen is going to get taken out, and yeah, these disruptors are going to get at least a queen every single time they, they're off their cooldown. Maybe they can even get more, like a drone here or there, a roach. You have a Ravager being morphed, four Ravagers being morphed, and 16 links. There is a battery here? A hero is two base all inning. That's the, the fun part here is that this really isn't necessary. Dark could be doing this defensively and we'd be having the exact same fight, except it would be on creep. And he could be having this fight with 10 more workers. He's right now, he's just scouting. He's like, there's no third. What am I going to do? He's just hiding units on the map. And Hero is going to all in into an all in. Because Dark has more information and Hero doesn't have any information. I think it's absolutely vital right now that these Ravagers remain somewhat hidden. And where are they? Well, they, they are actually hidden at this point. Disruptors moving into position, trying to get some drones here. And they're at least denying a bunch of mining time, no matter what's going to happen. Actually denying a crap ton of mining time here. Look at this. Just by being around, Dark is too afraid to currently mine. Natural only has three workers, so Hero is aware that there's actually not that much here. At the same time, we have a big engagement in towards the natural. Surely this is an error revealing your hand. Just like that. It feels a little bit silly. One of these Ravagers should probably fall. I feel like Disruptor Balls will be capable of catching up with that. Hero doesn't want to risk it. Still feels like there's some real potential there. More links are being constructed right now. 47 workers are out right now for Dark. Disruptors in the back, trying to get the shots off on these Ravagers. Will they be capable of getting it? One Ravager will go down. Second Ravager is going to get taken out as well. This army on the low ground, though, also gets absolutely blasted. And despite Hero seemingly being ahead for the entirety of the game, now he's actually struggling a little bit. Doesn't have any units anymore whatsoever. Plus one is about to finish up. That will make the Zealots extremely useful. Will make the Immortals a little bit better as well. But this third base will need to be cancelled. The Disruptor, well... It's just a single disruptor right now, so the other disruptor has been taken out. Maybe a big shot on some of these drones will be capable of helping the, the Korean Protoss player, but I honestly have my doubts. We're going to need a big hit. Three workers is not a big enough hit. It is a big hit, but not enough. It really isn't. Observer is going to survive as the spore continues chasing it. We're going to see another disruptor shot here, most likely in the natural. Uh, it's not quite off cooldown yet. It should be in a second or so. Okay, three seconds. Hero also kind of misjudging that situation. Couple of good piles here. Hitting absolutely everything. This disruptor will also hit a lot. I think these links are going to die though. That's not the fight that you want. Disruptor once again moving in. This time off of cooldown. There's a lot of gas being mined here. Six gas on 52 workers. Six workers get killed at once. 48 against 46 workers. And Hero slowly but surely kind of crawling his way back into this game that's way too much gas mining isn't it you gotta be able to afford a crap ton of ravagers which is useful but they also provide a massive target for these disruptors a second disruptor and a third disruptor are out third disruptor is on the way often against high disruptor counts having links and bane links is way better spire is a pretty ballsy play here coming out of dark i just have to say it you need a lot of idle resources in order to get something done with Aspire. I'm not quite sure if you can get a lot of idle resources if you're on 55 workers. That is a disruptor that needs to be picked up. Yep. We'll end up getting picked up. Fourth disruptor is out. Plus two on the way. Blink is already done. I mean, what you're going to build? Six Muras? Like, against plus two Blink Stalkers? I mean, great stuff, but it's not really going to work. I don't think that Spire is going to come into play whatsoever. Road speed is pretty important, especially when it comes to dodging those disruptor shots. Still one of these prisms flying around. A couple of creep tumors are going to get cleaned up. I don't actually mind Hero's position too much. If he can trade over time just a little bit, he's going to be just fine. He really is just going to be fine. Uh, I guess just a single worker there with that disruptor shot, but 
Over a longer period, he has killed 18 workers. I think it was 5 initially with that uh, double adapt drop. That means that disruptors are uh, responsible for 13 or so. There's 4 disruptors in this army. There's a bunch of links, but against well upgraded gateway units, links actually aren't that good. I'd love to see a big zealot warp in here. Plus 2 is about to finish up. We still have 3 active disruptors. First shot is going to connect with some of these roaches. Actually, that was 4 or 5 roaches. Mutas are going to be completely useless in this fight. 11 Mutas. There could have been so many other units that actually deal damage. But instead it's Mutalisk. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of transfuse energy ready, but what are you going to transfuse? All you have is Mutalisk. Mutas don't even get the kill on the Prism. Hero is going to be winning this game. 10 minutes of the weirdest push that I've ever seen, and he actually manages to get it here. What a sudden ending for that game then, all of a sudden. It really felt like Hero was ahead for the majority of time, then Dark makes this, in my opinion, ill-informed attack. Practically wins with it. Uh, Hero follows it up with a, a bunch of damage with his single disruptor. And then Dark decides to transition into 12 Mutas. Like, don't get me wrong, transitioning into Mutas against this type of composition can work. But it feels like you need to be on a higher drone count and you need to be slightly more safe than, than Dark was in this situation. It just felt wrong in a way. It really did not feel right. Now, uh, um, ooh, I think Dark actually. Almost would have been capable. It would have been close there. Getting that hatchery. Uh, I do believe that Hero was just barely in time. Actually built this uh, pylon in a pretty uh, funky location here. And he did that so that he... Uh, usually you build your first pylon over here, right? So either a gateway, your cyber core, another gateway here. If you build it over here, the distance for the probe to run towards your opponent's natural is slightly shorter. And that means you have a higher chance of blocking. Especially on a slightly longer map like 2k atmosphere. So... It's a cool little thing. It saves a bit of money. Otherwise, you need to send two probes down. One probe to build a pylon and one probe to block your opponent's natural. I'll have to wait and see what Hero is going to be doing. Dark is just chasing. Look at that. She's going to be chasing this uh, probe for, uh, for a tiny, tiny bit. That's costing a lot of minerals. That's worth it already. I mean, that's a very odd, odd choice. Dark is one of these players that has these early game things that just put him behind for no apparent reason. Like in ZVT, he'll always get six links. Um, he chases a probe with a drone in the early game of ZVP. It's just a bunch of slightly odd things that don't make a lot of sense. And you're like, oh, this is this is kind of weird. Why would you do that? And then you see him play in the mid game and especially in the late game. It's just phenomenal. Like, one of the greatest mechanical players just in the early game sometimes makes decisions that I can't quite figure out what the exact goal is of it. You know, like the, the alternative of not chasing with that drone just means that you'll need to right click on your mineral patches for a little bit. And in the worst case scenario, you'll still be losing less minerals than if you just for the entirety of the time have a drone not mining. It's I just don't quite understand it. I'd, I'd love for him to explain it to me sometime. But sadly, I'm not too close with Dark, so... I can't. can't ask him. This is a crazy cool move, by the way. Something Hero does a lot. Oh my god, I love this so much. This type of stuff, I think, is actually underutilized in the PvZ matchup. Like the double pylon blocks. Um, just, just blocking this base for a little bit longer. He's gonna finish it? He's actually going to finish it. This is wild stuff here. It's so annoying to deal with this as a Zerg. It's so, so annoying. It forces you to get a fourth queen before that hatchery. Um, you're going to be oversaturated on your bases when you already want to be mining from your natural. This actually really, really sucks. Now, it is a, it, it's not a minor investment, okay? This actually costs a fair amount as well, I have to admit. Um, you're going to lose your 100 minerals. He lost 25 because he canceled a, a pylon earlier as well. But it also just adds another layer of annoyance here when you also have these two adepts to deal with. Because, hey, do you want to attack the pylon? Do you want to fight these two adepts? What's, what really is the player? These Oracle is popping out as well at this point. Look at this. These adepts never need to go home. These adepts are just staying on the map right now. This hatchery is going to be built, well, over a minute later than it usually is. We almost have full saturation already in the main and in the natural base. Look at that third base timing. That is absolutely terrible. And these two adepts are being annoying as well. This is fantastic early game here. Out of hero, honestly. This is this is marvelous stuff. This, this really is... Is great StarCraft 2. 
It seems so simple and Hero makes it work every single time. This guy is absolutely brilliant. Second Oracle's on the way. Third base is on the way right now as well here for Hero. Hero's third base, because of all of those shenanigans, is delayed by what? A solid 10 seconds? But he definitely made up for that time already. Now the double Oracle comes in towards the natural as well. Six workers going down in dark. I'm not quite sure what he was doing there. Wasn't sure if he wanted to run or get the minerals, or run or get the minerals, or run or get the minerals. He just was kind of shaking uh, the booties of them drones over there. Oi, 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 oi. What a fantastic early game here out of Hero. This this has been, honestly, one of the sickest early games. And it, if Zerks talk about a Protoss being annoying, they'll talk about this type of stuff. You know, it just... It looks so crazy good. It looks so crazy good. And then I try to copy it, and it looks so bad. And it all falls apart. Now, there is a fast Evo chamber here. The single Adept is going to finish up its shade as well. A lot of Adept lives have been sacrificed. We have three more Adepts moving towards the top side. As these triple Oracles are also moving in, we'll get the kill on one of these Queens. The second Queen can be taken out as well. No. Instead, we'll switch the attention over to the drones. Oh my god, 10 drones have been killed. We're currently 31 workers against 44. The third base is already done. Double sentries being morphed in. Chrono boost here already on the Nexus. This game is... It's over. This game has actually ended. Dark isn't aware of it yet, but we know. This this has actually been sick. It's it's beautiful to watch. Beautiful to watch. Look at this. He lost a pylon, three adepts, and an oracle. He killed 14 drones, 17 links, and a queen. That's a worthwhile trade. He's so confident right now that he's just building a cannon. He's like, all right, there's no way I'm losing this game. The only way I lose is if I get Baneling busted on my third base or something like that. But otherwise. This is an absolute free win, and I agree with this um, with this analysis. This is a, a completely correct analysis. Follow up charge plus one. Why make things difficult for yourself if you can make it very easy? He's going to follow us up with a big charge lot. Most likely a couple of archons added in as well. Adapts once again, make their way across the map. This is so so good. This honestly is just so good. Good lord. Watching this guy play is, is a thing of beauty. He has to be the most annoying Protoss in the world. God, such a simp for a hero, it's crazy. Fort Nexus on the way. So we, uh, ooh, there's no Robo here. This is going to be a little bit of foregas. Uh, probably will follow this up with Blink, actually, won't he? His oracles are looking for a queen kill. I don't think they'll get it. There's a transfuse available here. Two more queens do join up. This oracle might actually fall. No, we'll barely manage to survive. 64 workers right now for dark. Fort base on the way as well. Charge has finished up. Plus one is about to finish up. Roach Warren is not quite done yet. And roaches are really the only thing that's going to be saving this fort base for dark. And <laughs> I still believe even if you do save it now, it's just going to be a temporary save. A couple of these creep tumors will get taken out as the zealots uh, probably want to just start connecting with these links and queens, right? Plus one finishes up. Charge is done as well. Uh, a couple of sentries moving forward too. Five roaches are on the way, but so are these four extra zealots. Guardian shield gets used. Not in range of all of these zealots, which means that the queen damage will remain pretty similar to what it usually is. I mean, this guardian shield is probably the world's most useless guardian shield. Lots of queens are falling, though, and the first roaches will pop. They'll need to put in a crap ton of work. These uh, drones moving back towards the natural at this point. 67 workers against 60. Blink on the way, plus two as well. I'd love to see a robotics facility here. We're seeing two instead, and then I double love that. It's uh, double the fun as well. Uh, dual immortal production is definitely going to help out against this roach count that we're seeing right now out of dark dark already does have that plus one uh, on the melee so it could eventually transition back into banelings these are still slow roaches by the way this is ridiculous this game is actually ridiculous look at this setup this is a this is a flank premeditated flank 12 years in prison careful hero Oh, here come the oracles as well. well. The flank is not quite working out. I love these ravagers morphing on the outside here, by the way. But it's just not going to matter. There's way too much protos right now. These oracles putting in some real work as well. Ravagers will get taken out. Pile doesn't really get dodged too efficiently. As, uh, I think it managed to hit about six zealots there with a single pile. Didn't, didn't even know that that was possible. Uh, fight was fine for a hero, but he does need to be a little bit careful. Nah, actually, does he? He's just going to go in another time, isn't he? Fort base is about to die. This is looking so, so tough right now here for Dark. 
queen's being microed back properly. This is some really good control, honestly. There's just not enough Zerg, it feels like. More roaches are streaming in. Glyal Reconstitution is about to finish up. Actually, Hero overstepping a little bit here. Fifth base is already on the way. He's up three workers. Templar Archives being built as well. And the first two Immortals are out, but... A moment right now here in which Dark can drone up. That's exactly what he's going to be doing. Plus nine drones. Baning Nest plus two melee attacks as well. Wants to get the Banings that can one-shot these probes. These are all correct calls. Absolutely terrible start here for Dark. And Hero trying his best in the past minute and a half to throw this out of the window. Five Archons being <laughs> morphed in though. It is going to be real tricky. It's going to be real tough here for Dark to get in to get back into this game. I mean, we have four Immortals, five Archons, and that is an army right now that I don't really think Dark has a a, a direct answer to. Mix in ten more Zealots with the next warp in, and yeah, Dark's going to be in some real trouble. Two Stalkers, seven Zealots. Armor upgrade starts here for Hero. We have a bunch of links. We're going to require. Bane links to be done. I don't have Bane link speed yet, though. I love that upgrade. Okay, I think that was a mistake, actually. I think Dark forgot to start that. Would have been very helpful. Her Bane links not being done yet isn't really helpful either. Okay, they will finish up right now, but with less HP and without the speed, they're just slightly, slightly less good. Oh my god, they're gonna catch all of these zealots. Ravagers trying to hold the line here with these biles. Banelings will uh, clean up all of those zealots. A couple of biles will connect with these Archons and Immortals. This base will be given up for now. I'm not quite sure if that is a thing, though. You can't go back to three base if you're playing against five, at least. I don't believe you can. Five Immortals here are shooting their shot. Ravager biles are going to connect in a big way, though, here. 1,400 minerals still in the bank right now for a hero. Gets a big warp in with two Archons in the main base. And despite Dark cleaning up this aggression, over at the third base, a lot of workers are falling in the main bay. And he's got some decent connections, plus two melee attacks finishes up as well. However, there's 83 workers right now for a hero against the 66 of Dark. Both of these oracles are still alive. I think one oracle has fallen, right? I think we started with three, yeah. One oracle has fallen, I think at the very start it was as well. 12 more zealots on the way. This is just the issue. It's, a, it's an income issue right here. 4k mineral income for the Protoss player, while the Zerg is working of a measly 2.4-2.5k mineral income. And you can be throwing away Zealots for the next five days, and Dark still will be struggling to get into this game. We see continuous upgrades coming out of Hero as well, who's uh, kind of restarting his Immortal count. Like These are all fresh Immortals after losing the initial five. I think it was five, right? Yep, five Immortals have gone out. 69 Zealots have fallen as well, exactly at this point. And a lot more are here to die for ire. Evo Chamber, or sorry, Infestation Pit gets built in a forward position to, to try and help block against these zealots. I feel like this base should finally die. We have the Prism once again in the main base. Two Archons, a crap ton of zealots as well. And with the upgrades that they have, I do believe that these Roaches and Ravagers will not be enough. At the same time, the Forum also gets broken here. And I actually think that Hero just straight up wins the game. We already knew it 10 minutes ago, but now Dark is also aware that this game is absolutely over. The thing that isn't quite over yet, though, is this series, as it currently is 2-0 uh, in favor of Hero. It doesn't mean that Dark can't come back. Dark has made comebacks like this in the past. He'll make comebacks like this again in the future. The question is, will he make a comeback like that right now? Look at his dog go. Stuck on the edge. Come here, doggo. What you doing, buddy? I want to touch the creep. I wonder how creep feels like. Is it like somewhat sticky or... Is it just like a different color ground and does it smell funky? It also moves. Like you can see it, like it's wavy, you know, in a certain area. See stuff moving underneath the ground almost. It's also not really purplish like it shows on the mini map. It's kind of... It's just like a dark dark type of gray almost but it smells nasty it wouldn't surprise me most of the things zergs do smell nasty funnily enough most zergs in real life actually smell quite good you know good personal hygiene i guess if you if you play zerg you can't really get away with smelling bad because there will be too many bad jokes being made about you all right uh where are we hatchery block here once again for the third time in a row as so you can see, Dark with that uh, that drone chasing. It's actually starting to piss me off a little bit. 
So much that I almost want to message him on Instagram or something like that. After he accepts my friend request. He hasn't quite accepted... Do you have friend requests on Instagram? Probably just a follow, no? I don't think you have friends, like on Facebook. I remember back in the day, I used to always add pro gamers on Facebook. Before I was a pro gamer myself, I would be really happy if they would add me. And I send them a Facebook message, they never respond. Sometimes I send them the replay where I beat them on ladder in the Facebook message. Hey bro, what do you think of this game? <laughs> then they open it, it's them losing to me. For gating them. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Oh, yeah. Got blocked by a lot of people back in the day. I was an annoying little boy in 2010. But we've grown up and now I can just follow people on Instagram. I can ask them these hard hitting questions. Six links as a start. This feels like a link flood then, no? Who built six links in the early game? That makes no sense. Actually, it makes some sense because Hero is really good with the first adapt. Oh, these links are going for a. Uh, Ooh! <laughs> They're, they're taking the long way around. I hope they have a bottle of whiskey for for along the way. Otherwise, it's going to be a boring road ahead. This pro Why is this adept staying at home? How does Hero make these reads? I want to know. I want to look into his head. What did he see here? What did he figure out? He, he sends the adepts across the map every single game, except the time where he's getting ling flooded. Now he gets the gateway before the pylon. He's like playing the safest... The absolute safest opener I've seen in my entire life. I'm pretty sure that this game is once again over. Dark is now aware of it as well. He's like, oh my god, you can't be serious. Oh, oh! Oh? If this shade finishes... Oh, 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 no shot! Oh my god, he's gonna get in. Okay. Oh no, he's gonna get in. Okay, so he's in right now. This adept should die. These two adepts on the outside actually are doing way more work than I really ever thought they could. These drones will make sure that no wall can be built. This game right now is over, but it's in favor of Dark. These two adepts are trying to move back. Oracle does manage to pop out right now. Lots of these drones are going to fall. Pylon dies, though. Two adepts still alive, and so is this Oracle. Second Oracle's on the way already. We need a chrono boost on that right away, Hero. We needed it five minutes ago. Pylon goes down. And I actually think that Hero manages to somehow, some way survive. Lynx stay alive. Seven drones get built. It is 15 workers against 28. And Hero holds. The pylon is going to finish up. More links are on the way. This wall needs to be reinforced at some point. We have a battery in an off position. I'd prefer it a little further back. That way it makes it easier to rewall with things that are in batteries. Batteries are there to heal your buildings or units. Not to really make the walls themselves. It's not going to matter, however, because there's no more links being constructed currently. I've seen Hero defend stuff like this and then follow it up with like seven, eight oracles afterwards. It's like, all right, you're going to cheese me? Watch this, buddy. Now I'm going to build 12 oracles. It's going to be a great time. You're going to love it. It's going to be Twilight Council actually here. Did you see a Twilight Council? The ding got spotted, right? No, no, it didn't. Twilight Council and a fourth oracle. Okay. All right, all right. I see you. This pylon is not covering this gateway, by the way, so... If he's planning on taking out this pylon with his adept right now to try and leave the base, um, that would definitely unpower one of the two gates here. It, it really would unpower one of the two gates. This triple Oracle still haven't dealt too much damage. To be honest, they don't really need to. Hero currently up 10 workers. There is three queens against three Oracles. That is not good. Because you need to match the Oracle count at every single base in order to fight. Or you need a Spore and uh, just any any amount of queens and usually you're fine. But there's no Spore over here. That means that this queen is going to fall. It wouldn't surprise me if Hero even tries to kill a second one here above the Spore. Sometimes it's possible. Decides not to do it. There's four Oracles right now. I think he's going to dive in for another queen here. No. Turns off the Pulsar Beam. Just going to relax for a little bit. We don't have a fifth Oracle on the way. There's an absolute crap ton of Glaive Adepts. <laughs> I don't know why he did that. Surely he knew that this was not going to work out. That this gate was not being powered by this fight. It's literally half, half a screen away. Like, there's no way that would power. He knew that. If I can see it, Hero can see that as well. Sphora Cross are still alive and they're uh, denying any mining from going down on the natural right now. We have some... Uh, in between spores. The moment you have to start building in between spores against Protoss, usually you're in a pretty bad spot. Dark definitely is in a pretty bad spot. Two queens are going to fall. Does end up killing one Oracle. Hero needs to be careful that he doesn't lose a second one here. He's going to get a uh, 
stasis ward will catch, I think, three? Yeah. Three of these drones. At the same time, the glaive adapts are at the front. I'm just going to trade very well with these links. Um, maybe. 14 more links are on the way. There's no road warren yet. The problem is that there's more adapts on the way. If this was it, these links would be capable of dealing with that. But this isn't it. You're going to need roaches eventually because the adapt count is going to keep growing and keep growing and keep growing. Oracles will find a queen here if they continue looking. Doesn't quite seem to be the case. Oracles, can we get some kills? No, Hero doesn't seem too interested in getting kills right now. We have 19 adepts against 41 links, and adepts skill very well if it's just pure links. Seeing this roach warn is going to give Hero a lot of peace of mind. Just saying, hey, there's not going to be any roaches, at least for another 20 -ish seconds or so, 25 seconds. Um, I have a lot of time to shade back and forth, back and forth, and I'll just be trading against links. First queen gets taken out, I almost think you should cancel here. I also don't mind the finish though, especially with the oracles above it. Every single link is going to get taken out. The adepts stay alive and dark for the third time in a row is going to die in this game. Workers are falling already. Six roaches are in production. WWGG gets caught and that is going to be it for today. Thanks everyone so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy this series despite it being a 3-0. Pretty one-sided in favor of Hero, but the games are honestly... They were, they were quite good. They were interesting to watch. They were intense. Hero's making some special reads, especially in this game. I'm impressed by that. Yeah. All right. If you did like it, don't forget to like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see all of you next time for a new video. Thank you, and bye-bye.